G'day. Here's a curious grade eight probability question, and it goes as follows. A bag contains four pieces of paper, each labeled one of the digits, one, two, three, and four, with no repeats. Okay, four pieces of paper, digit number one, number two, number three, number four, on these pieces of paper. Uh, three of these pieces are drawn one at a time without replacement to construct a three-digit number. Okay, so this is a bag, and I pull out a piece, pull out a piece, then pull out a piece, one at a time. Got it. Uh, that makes a three-digit number. All right, fine. What is the probability that the three-digit number is a multiple of three? Huh, okay. I feel like I understood the question up to that point, and now I'm suddenly a little twist here. It's made me a little nervous. All right, so, okay. So I no, don't really know what I need to do and how to go about it. I'm just going to do strategy number two, which is just do something. Okay, so maybe, maybe you pull out a two first, then you pull out a four next, and then you pull out a three next. So maybe you see the number two, four, three doing this game. Or maybe you pull out, I don't know, a three, then a one, then a two. I'm just making it up. A four, a two, then a one or something. So the question is, you could pull out a three-digit number like this. And the question is, when are these things a multiple of three? How often will that occur? What's the chance of this being a multiple three? Ugh. All right, right. I do have this vague memory for this divisibility rule for three. And the trouble with this sort of stuff is that I really need to think my way through it because I really don't hold something onto my brain unless I understand this thing. How could I tell if 243, for example, is a multiple of three? I mean, obviously I can think of 240, I think 24, that's like eight, so 80 and one. So that's definitely a multiple of three. But if I didn't have it in my head, what's that rule for multiple of three? So what I'm going to do here is really just try, try to get multiples of threeness in my head. So when I say 243, what do I really mean? I mean two hundreds plus four tens plus three. Actually, that's not what I wrote. Let me write, let me, let me write what I literally said. Two hundreds, is more like it, plus four tens, and I guess three ones. Now, people look at this sort of thing, and they notice that the number 100 is very close to multiple of 3. In fact, it's one off. In fact, 100 is 99 plus 1. And 10 is very close to multiple 3. It's actually one off. It's 9 plus 1, and I guess 1 is just 1. So if you like, I'm just, just playing with the ideas, I've got 2 times 99 plus a 2, and a 4 times 99 plus a 4, and I've got a 3 times a 1, just a 3. Well, that's already a multiple of three. You don't have to worry about that. That's already a multiple of three. You don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is the two plus the four plus the three. Aha. Uh -huh. So to tell if something is a multiple of three, all you have to worry about is the sum of the digits of the number. That's it. So two, four, three adds up to nine. That's a multiple of three. Three plus one plus two adds up to six. That's a multiple of three. Four plus two plus one adds up to seven. That's not a multiple of three. Hang on, that was a sidetrack. What was the question? What are we doing? We've got uh, these four cards, put out numbers one, two, three, and four, get a three-digit number like this. What's the probability they're going to get, they give you a multiple of three? That is, what are the chances the three digits you get add up to a multiple of three? Okay, what do I do? How do I do that? Hmm. I spent all this time just understanding the question, understanding the mathematics of multiples of three. Well, the interesting thing here is that if all that matters is the sum of the digits, 2, 4, 3, and 4, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 4, in some sense, are all going to be the same mathematics, all giving the multiples of 3. So, hmm, what makes these numbers the same? I guess they're all the ones that leave the 1 behind. So anything that leaves a 1 behind, as the fourth card still in that bag, is going to give me multiple of 3. Ah, aha. Now I feel like I've got a root on how to think about this. If the one's left behind, I'm guaranteed to get a multiple of three. If a two's left behind, I have to think about it. If a three's left behind, I have to think about it. If a four's left behind, I have to think about it. But I bet I can think about those three other cases, and maybe that probability will come clear. When I'm in the case where one is left behind, or what do I need left behind? That feels a bit easier than trying to count all the three-digit numbers I can have. Now I have to count the numbers that are left behind. Oh, I like that. That's a good idea. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let you mull on that. Can we focus our thinking on what's left behind and answer the question that way? Because that would be really cool if that works out. So mull about it. Think about it. And then check your thinking against the essay that goes with this video. Have fun with it. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.